So, question 21. You've got a function here, a cubic function. Determine the nature of the stationary points, differentiate it. Determine the nature, table. Show that x minus 1 is a factor of that, synthetic division. Factorise it, finish off factorising it from the bottom of the synthetic division table. Cause the stationary points, that'll come to your factorisation, sketch the curve. As if you didn't know what it looks like, it's an x cubed curve. It's going to look like that. Still, you have to go through the whole rigmarole. Right, first part. Stationary points. Right, differentiate it. So that's going to be 3x squared, hmm, just minus 3. Then make a little statement, however, put down your own preference there. Stationary means that the derivative has to equal 0, because it has to stop climbing and level off, so the gradients have to be 0, or the other way around. Which means that 3x squared minus 3 has to equal 0. Now there's two ways to proceed from there. There's only one mention of x, so you could just solve it for x. Take the 3 over, divide by the 3, and then take the square root. Remembering there'll be two answers to a square root. Or you could factorise it. I think I'll go for the factorisation, because what you do here depends on what you'll do with your table. So I'll make that 3 times x squared minus 1 equals 0, even though it might seem a bit harder just now. And then difference of two squares, x minus 1, x plus 1. I might be less inclined to do that if that hadn't been the difference of two squares. If that had been something x squared minus 2, then I would just have solved it the other way to have sums in the answers. Well, and from that I get my two answers. x either equals 1 or negative 1. So I'll put them in order. If x equals negative 1, it wants the coordinates, so I need the y-coordinate. That's the first equation. If x is negative 1, then y would be negative 1 cubed minus 3 times negative 1 plus 2. That's not a very good 3. So that's going to be negative 1 plus 3 plus 2. That'll be 4. So I've got the point negative 1, 4. If x is 1, put that back in to find the original value of the function. You've drawn the graph of y equals f of x. f of x will be the value of y. That means that y will be 1 cubed minus 3 times 1 plus 2. And that's just going to give you 3 take away 3 is 0. So the other points at 1, 0. Nature of them. Well, I've factorised them. I know what they're happening. Something happens at negative 1, something happens at 1. So I just need to know what was happening, what was it doing before it got there, what was happening in between them, and what was it doing when it left. And I'm going to find that by using a table of signs, because I've got a product here. Now that 3 is a positive, so I don't need to mention it in my product. If it had been a negative 3, I'd have had to put it down. But a positive doesn't affect the signs of the answers. So I've only got to do x minus 1, x plus 1, find what they multiply to give, and that will tell me what's happening. So, x minus 1. That is 0 when x is 1. x minus 1, if you think of the graph of x minus 1, it's a line that climbs upwards. So it must have been negative before it got to 0 and positive after. x plus 1. That's 0 at negative 1. It's climbing again. It's a positive x. Which means that it must have been negative before it reached 0. And then all the values will be positive afterwards. And then I can find the value of this, because three times it won't change the sign. I can find the value of this by, by multiplying these things together. A negative times a negative is a positive. A zero times a zero. One negative in a product makes it negative. Zero makes it zero. Positive. So it was looking like this. Which is no surprise at all, because it was a cubic graph, and all cubic graphs look like that. Unless it's a negative x cubed, in which case it looked like that. Or unless the two factors are the same in which case these two points will move together and you'll have a point of inflection. Still, you need to go through this whole rigmarole anyway. Which means I can make my final statements now. So I've got, it said, find the constant turning points and determine the nature. So I've got this, I've got a maximum turning point at negative 1, 4, and I've got a minimum turning point at 1, 0. Although I'm more inclined to write those words out in full, it's just don't have space here. So that was part A. Part 2. <coughs> hey, oh, I forgot to mention that previous one with that table. That was a pest. Just these things go in your mind. If I hadn't have factorised that expression and I just solved it by taking, just by getting x and then had the plus or minus 1 at the end of it, then when I made up my table, I wouldn't have had these factors to be able to use a table of signs and then I wouldn't have any option but to pick numbers 
to put in and evaluate them from the, the derivative to see whether they were positive or negative. So swings and roundabouts there. Anyway, part two. Show that x minus 1 is a factor. So straight away you go, hoo-ha. That means I'm going to put down the synthetic division. 1, don't forget. Power 3 means there should be 4 things. There's only 3 zeros for the missing ones. There's no x squared. Negative 3, 2. Show that x minus 1 is a factor. That means 1 should be a root. So I should get an answer of 0. So I've got 1 times 1. Add it on, times 1, add it on, times 1, add it on, and true enough, I get 0. I get 0, which you can interpret in two ways. 0 is either the value of the function at x equals 1, or 0 is the remainder on dividing the function by x minus 1. Well, since it mentions the factor way, that's the division. So I should really say this. Since the remainder equals 0, that means that x minus 1 must be a factor because it's divided in exactly with no remainder. Then it says factorise it completely. Right, so f of x would equal this then. I know that x minus 1 was one of the factors and this is the quotient, that's the remainder, that's how many times it went in, so it must be times that then. Three parts, it must be x squared plus x minus 2. And then it's just factorise that part. So it must be x times x, it must be 1 times 2. A plus in the middle goes to the bigger product, goes to the 2, opposite sign, so it's minus 1. There you go, a double root. So I know that this graph is going to hit the x-axis at negative 2 and be a tangent at 1. But you knew that anyway from the previous part, because you had that turning point at 1, 0. Was it 1? Hence or otherwise, factorise it fully. Oh, that's it done then. That was part 1, that was part 2. Right, part C. State the coordinates. So that means, it, strictly speaking, I don't need to go through the process of saying why it happens. But I tend to just do that anyway. Where does it, the curve cut the axis? So I'll just put it down anyway, even though it just said state. It crosses the y-axis when x is 0. So if you put 0 into that, that means that y will be 2. So it's cutting at 0, 2. It's going to cut the x-axis when y is 0 which means f of x, this thing should equal 0, which means x minus 1, x minus 1, x plus 2 should equal 0, which means either x equals 1 or negative 2. So the two points would be negative 2, 0 and 1, 0. I know I just, you could just have stated those three because that's all I asked for. State where it cuts the axis and sketch it. Right, I need to clear it. To sketch the curve. Right, so I've got all the turning points and the coordinates, so it's just a case of sketching the curve. Oh, put in what we know. Cuts at negative 2, 0. Cuts at 1, 0. Cuts at... Put 0, 2 about there, because it doesn't need to be the same scale in both. It's got a minimum turning point at 1, 0. I knew that anyway. It's got a maximum turning point at negative 1, 4. Oh, to put 4 about here. Negative 1, 4, not the maximum turning point. And it's just a case of putting it all together. So it's going to come up through here, through that turning point, down there, and then turn, and then there's a problem, head off where. By having that turning point and then that point after it, that fairly well defines the nature of the curve. I can't make it go too far in either direction because it's got to head towards there. But when I leave that one, I don't know where to go. So what you would normally do in a case like that is, I'd find some extra point. I get an extra point choosing something like 2 for instance, just so I could pin this down, I don't know where it's going. So putting 2 into that formula, I'm going to have 8 take away 6 plus 2, that's 10 take away 6 is 4. So it's going to go through the point 2, and 4 should be level with that. So when it leaves it, it's going to turn round and head up through there, through this extra point, the point, we'll put it in, 2, 4. And then there's a the graph, put it in its name, y equals x cubed, minus 3x plus 2. That's that question. Question 22. The diagram shows a sketch of the curve with this equation, a cubic one again, and no surprise. There it is, that familiar old shape. Find the coordinates of points with the gradient of the tangent, since it says that. Gradient. Equations. Differentiate. So the first thing you do is differentiate that to get the gradient equation. That'll be 3x squared minus 12x plus 8. Because at every point on a curve there are three numbers. There's an x-coordinate, there's a y-coordinate, and there's the gradient. 
and you only need one of them to find the other two. The best one's X, obviously. Putting X into either of those is just a calculation, you get the other two. But you could be told M and work it backwards, or Y and work it backwards, and that's what's happening here. It says, at these points, I don't know the X coordinates, but I know the gradient is negative one. The gradient is negative one, so that's 45 degree downwards. I should use this, 45 degree downwards. So where would that be? So it would be one about there, 45 degree down, and one about there. That be these two points. I'm looking for these points. So, make the statement then. If the gradient is negative one, then that means the derivative must equal negative one. So that this equation must equal negative one. Quadratic equation, take it all over to one side. 3x squared minus 12x equals negative one plus nine equals zero. Now, does it factorise or not? Have they thrown a wobbly? Is this one of those equations where you might need to use the formula for it? Well, the first thing is, I can see threes all over the place. I'll take that out. That'll simplify it a bit. So I've got x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals 0. And I'm just assuming that's going to factorise quite neatly. You can always check. You can see it is going to happen anyway. But if you've got a quadratic in general and you're not too sure, check the discriminant. If the discriminant's a perfect square, it'll factorise, but that's obvious for this one. So I've got x and x, and it must be 1 and 3, and that's a negative, so the big one's negative. That's a plus, so they're both the same, which means you've got a gradient of negative 1 when x is 1 or when x is 3. Now, what does the question actually ask you for? It says coordinates, so I need the y coordinate. I just need to put them back in. So if x is 1, y is going to be 1 cubed minus 6 times 1 squared plus 8 times 1. So for that one, I'm going to get the answer 3. So I've got the point 1, 3, wherever I can put that. So I've got 1, 3. And if x equals 3, it's a bit of a more of a calculation, I'm going to have putting 3 into it. I'm going to have 3 cubed minus 6 times 3 squared plus 8 times 3. But you can always put that into your calculator. What's that? 27 minus 54 plus 24 and that's going to come to negative 3. So the other point's going to be, whatever I can put it, 3, negative 3. But of course you won't be as crushed for spaces. So part B. The line y equals 4 minus x is a tangent to the curve. Well, as soon as you hear that, a line is a tangent to the curve. You almost used to think straight away, intersection, substitute it. But not so hastily in this case. If you didn't spot something, then probably you would just head off then and you'd be substituting that into the other one. So you'd have your x cubed minus 3x plus 2 equals 4 minus x, take it to one side, factorising and so on, and that would get you the answer. But it's only two marks, and that would be a lot longer than two marks worth. Now, the, if, the thing to notice here was the gradient of this line, negative x, is negative 1. And in part A, you just found the two points where the gradients were negative 1. That means that this line must be one of those. So it's just a case of testing which of them, it can't be both of them because they're in different places, it's just a case of testing which of these, which of these points fits that line. So it's just shell up whether you choose the correct one first. 4 minus x, 4 minus x, I'm inclined towards this one just now, that looks if, but then that sketch is just random, I don't know, it's just a case of testing it. So I'll test the point 1, 3 first of all. So 1, 3, how does that fit with that equation? Well, if I put 3 for y and 1 for x, do the two sides come to the same thing? Yes, 3 equals 3, so that's correct, so that must be the one. You could always double check with the other one, but it could only be one of them, which means that must be the point that fits the line, which means that A must be the point 1, 3. If you tried those ones in, you wouldn't get the same answer for both sides, so it wouldn't fit the line. That would be this other line. And that's all that had to be done for part B. Just choose between the two points. Question 23. Functions of functions. A. Find an expression for h of f of x. For three marks. For both of them. Well, fair enough. h of f of x. That means h of whatever f of x is. And that's x squared minus x plus 10. Oh, I'm going to write that down twice. And what does h do? It takes the log of it. Log base 2 of whatever and whatever is this thing. x squared minus x plus 10. Well, it wasn't too hard. What's the next one? h again. Of g of x. 
Well, that's h of whatever g of x is, 5 minus x. What does h do? It takes the log of whatever it's got hold of. So it's got hold of 5 minus x. So that's it. And that was three marks. Oh, for goodness sakes. Where's the sweetie bag? B. Part B then. So hence solve this equation. Well, just putting that back down again. That first one was log base 2 of x squared minus x plus 10. That one was log base 2 of 5 minus x. That's to equal 3. That way now. Right, to find what x is. Well, since I don't want these logs, you can't just take over just now of these three terms. All I have to do is gather them together. Well, there's a simple rule for that. If you're adding logs, you multiply the expressions are operating on. If you're subtracting logs, you divide them. So it'll be x squared minus x plus 10 divided by 5 minus x would equal 3. Then, get rid of the log. Inverse on the other side. If that had been sine, this said inverse sine. If that was squared, squared root. Log base 2, inverse 2 to the power of 3. So x squared minus x plus 10 over 5 minus x equals that. It's looking better. There's no logs in the way now. Still got fractions. Get rid of fractions. Multiply everything by whatever it takes. 5 minus x. Or in this simple case of just one thing on one side and one on the other, just think of cross multiply x squared minus x plus 10 is going to be, that's 8 times 5 minus x. And then you can see what's happening. There's a quadratic. It's all going to come to one side. I'm going to get a quadratic, which will hopefully factorise. There's nothing nasty like I have to use the quadratic formula. So I've got on this side then, x squared minus x plus 10 equals 40 minus 8x. Bring it all over. That'll be x squared minus 7x. So we get plus 7x minus 30 equals 0. So that will be x, x, factors of 30, that's going to be a 3 and a 10. Plus goes to the larger, opposite signs equals 0. So x will either equal 3 or negative 10. That's it.